Hello, everybody, and welcome to Deborah Cobelt Live. I have a question for you. Do you have issues? <laughs> Don't we all? Because joining me today in the studio, I'm so thrilled to have you here. Oh, I'm my so goodness. Excited. Audrey. Hey, Audrey Hope. playing Van Morrison, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we asked what your favorite song. We like to please around here. We really love do. it. So we asked what your favorite song was, and you came up with that. But Audrey Hope, you are the host, uh, the YouTube host of the show Hope for Relationships. Yes. Is there hope for relationships? I'm not really sure, but we'll talk and we'll figure that out. How's that? You help us figure out if there's hope for yes, relationships. Yes, and I also heard you talk about hope in your last segment. So here we are again. Talk yes. Talk about divine coincidence. I did a show right before this yes. um, about City of Hope and yes. what they're going to be doing down at the Forum this weekend on Sunday. So um, thank you for mentioning of that. Of course. It was amazing. But you are also a relationship and addiction specialist. Um, you've worked with some pretty heavy hitters. I mean, I know you, you mentioned them simply because it was out there in public, you know, um, who you Some of them I can say. Exactly. Some of them I can't. Um, but basically, when you work with relationship and addiction issues, uh, wait, put your mic a little closer, I think. Great. Is that good? Yeah. Good. Got her? Okay. Because we, def we definitely want to hear me. We're live here. So, you know. <laughs> you definitely want to hear what I have to say. All. We've, got, we've got issues. We've got issues. Okay. So anyway, what are some of the main issues plaguing people? You know what I noticed over the years, doesn't even matter what it is, um, relationship issues tend to be the same. Men not really getting women, women not really getting men. Mm -hmm. Then we all end up needing advice. And yes. what are some of the hot button topics today? Well, Actually, you know, I'm an intuitive also, which makes it interesting going like deep. I'm dying to know. But what you we think really got to talk about self-esteem because a lot of women don't know the secrets about men that they really have a lot of insecurities. Okay, so that's the first thing you got to do when you heal someone is you got to you got to raise the self-esteem and that's the major problem because if you don't have self-esteem you don't have the goal are you be. talking the woman or about the man? men and women it's hmm. all about the self -esteem. man a guy will not let off that his self-esteem is dipping a little bit absolutely don't you think? absolutely and that can be a little intimidating to women i think deborah women do not know this truth hmm. men suffer from insecurity okay they are really vulnerable and I've had the privilege to sit with them for years and learn these secrets okay they have they are so afraid they're locked in what are they afraid of losing us no they just they haven't been allowed to let out what they really feel it's the culture you see we know what the culture has done to us as women but the culture has kept them Let's get a little closer yeah, the culture, <clears throat> sorry, the culture has kept men in in a box. And so, you know, the thing is when I get to work with them in addiction, it's an amazing opportunity because then we talk about it and we get it all out. So if you heal the addiction, you got to heal, you know, the deep core issues. And the addiction in this case would be? Um, there's so many reasons for addiction. I mean, we could spend hours just talking about that. I mean, who isn't addicted to something in this day and age? All right, okay? well, you've got, okay, I'm only going to go like, I'm, I'm not even <laughs> stepping out of the box. You've got your drinking and drugs and sex and, I, I don't know, bad And relationship addiction. Um, relationship addiction, okay? What is that? Well, I'll say it like this. Here we go. Women stay too long at the party. I don't know what that means. Women do not know when to leave. A party or a relationship. The man, the relationship. See, I told you, I'm a very literal person. You're uh. like, I'm like, wait a minute. So they stay too long at the party and they and should have left. And that's just a way of, they, they okay. should have left. That's what I mean. It's just a, it's just my way of saying it. So Women don't know when, when a guy to is a, leave. Okay, so a guy's a jerk. And you know why? I'm going to tell right. you why. Here, yeah. I'm going to play therapist. Do you okay. want to know why? Because women always think, we all think we can fix everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I could fix them. I could fix the relationship. The potential. I could fix the potential. Exactly. In other words, what you're saying is get the hell out of there, right? Well, they don't, they take crumbs. Mm. Women take crumbs. So Why? we're hitting key Why points now crumbs? about what needs to be held. Why do women take crumbs? Oh my, are you kidding? We've been raised that way. Okay, we are we are now locked into a patriarchal society, right? We We've been raised always, to take crumbs. they are raised to take crumbs. We What do women do? They give all their power to a man. Okay, so but give in, me an example. Like, okay. give me an ex a really solid example of someone who's come in there. What power did she give up and how, how was she raised to do that? Well, she doesn't have a sense of self and doesn't have her self-esteem so she thinks she needs the man to complete her and so she's kind of got this donut hole and she doesn't look to herself to fix it she looks outside and Again, she looks to the man. Again, give me a solid man. example. What does that mean? Um, a, a woman who who stays 
with a guy knowing that he doesn't treat her right and she may stay because she's afraid of being alone. She's afraid that if she goes out there, she's, she's aged. I mean, women have a big problem, you know, with thinking they're too old. I'm not enough this, I'm not enough that. And so they'll end up making deals with themselves, well, I'll stay with this guy because he's blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, they're out. miserable. Exactly. And it's sort of, they emulate that, even if they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. The guy could pick up on it, he becomes kind of a jerk and shuts mm -hmm. down, and then mm -hmm. none, none of it's working. Okay, wait a minute, what if you have kids though? That's kind of hard. I mean, yes. a lot of people don't want to leave if they have kids. That's true. And there's always a reason to not leave. Mm. Okay? Oh, good point. There's always a good reason to not leave. All right? Mm. But then you have to weigh out what's the price. What's the real price of things? You know, what do we really pay to stay? All right. I'm, I'm going to go down your list of things because um, you brought up leaving and what's the price. What about someone who's afraid to leave because of the price? You know, they're afraid that, and I'm not talking money either that, I don't know, they won't get to see their kids, or the husband will say, I've heard this from a lot of friends, oh, you're just crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. In which case, that automatically puts her into a situation where she feels less than, and then she stays. What do you yes. do if he's beating her down? Again, good reasons, but you have to be able to have the courage and to risk. You have to decide what you want in your life and what you're willing to do for it. Are you willing to do everything, heal everything, walk through fire to have a great life? And a lot of people don't want to do that, you see? They just will make deals and say, I'll stay, I'll get the money, I'll do this. And then they'll be miserable and they'll end up maybe taking pills. You mm. see? so. It's, it's a risk Or to eating have, or something or else, you it's know, a, it's drinking. A, exactly. Yeah, I got your point. Yeah. But is it worth it to risk? Absolutely. Is it worth it to have the courage to dare to go have a better life? Absolutely. I've seen it a hundred okay. million times. You walk through the door with your courage. Remember that movie, She Walked Out with the Vase? You know, mm -hmm. Diane. I do. All That's right, it. so what do you do for those who are so afraid to do it? How do you guide them? Well, you have to really work with them and you have to understand there's no escape. There, you've got to heal. So heal to love. All right? If you do not do it, you will only meet the same guy, the same character, the same problems over and over again. So there's really no choice because you'll suffer. And you see the suffering is the fuel and the gas. So how do you, what do you do? You give people tools, they come to see you, and yes. some, a woman is coming and going, I dated the same jerk five mm -hmm, times. Mm -hmm. um, he only wants to come over and you know sleep with me, but I right. don't really go on a date. And right. all we really do is maybe have dinner. He sleeps with me, mm -hmm. and then I he leaves in the morning. I see him, you know, maybe once a week. Okay, um, there you go, Deborah. And and it's not about the guy. See, the woman has to decide that she's cleaning house. You see, there it is, right there. So get out. Uh, get out and start again. And as we said, feng shui, feng shui mm. your life. Keep the empty space. People are so afraid to be alone, right? Yes, yeah, so, so tell scary. me about that. That's scary. Even it's when really I'm alone scary. sometimes and there's alone time, of course. I think, uh-oh, there's a lull in the conversation. And that happened to me. I'll yes. talk to my about myself for a moment. After my parents died, because mm -hmm. they were always in my life, even if they were in Florida, I was always on the phone with them. And suddenly they were gone. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, no. So um, I have a good support system, great friends. But still, you know, there's always yeah. a lull somewhere. Well, there you go. Then How probably, do you get used to that? probably what happens is because you don't deal with the grief or you don't deal with the problems, you got to run. You literally have to run and do other things because you can't sit in the stillness and deal with the pain. And that's what happens with grief. So then, People how do you just, get to the other side? You, you, you have to. You'll end up having a health problem. Mm. And your health problem will be the wake-up call because if you don't do the work on it, you're eventually the body's going to take the hit. And when the body takes mm. the hit, you'll finally have that wake-up call and you finally go, okay, let me get down with it and I really have to look at the grief because we want to run. Who doesn't want to run? I mean, alcohol and drugs is all about that. Let's put a Band-Aid over it and let's run away. But you see, as a spiritual healer and you learn about karma and the soul, there's no place to run. You're only going to end up back at yourself. So take the pain as a, as a wake up call and go, okay, I'm stopping and I'm going to look deeply at this and then I'm going to heal it. You see, because, how do you heal it? Well, you have to sit with it. Okay. Without running and putting something else on it, like grief. You got to go in grief in all of its ugliness. I just lost a best friend. Believe mm. me, I, 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 I've just gone through this screaming, crying, getting down with how angry I am that she left. 
she's so young and how I really felt, but it was really in my body. I mean, I was really feeling it, right? And if, I, I mean, I could have drank, I could have gone on a trip, I could have taken up a sport, but what I did is, because I know about healing, I sat with it every single day, every single day in its rawness. Until you got used to sitting with it? No, until I cried it out and screamed it out and got it out of my body and released it on a deep external level. But, and now I'm all right, and I did it pretty quickly. You see what I'm saying? But Yeah, but you've got the tools and you know. You know, but um, grief takes on different forms. Yes. You know, there, it, sometimes it's harder than others, don't it's you think? So, it's, I, I think it's like a toxic gas that has its own, like, it stuff. It erupts when it, when it decides to. It's really to. that bad, and you, and you have to survive it. But you can't run from it. So what you've got to do is you've got to lay down. I'll give you an example. Lay down on the ground and scream it out every single feeling that you feel. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay? sure I'm a screamer. I like to sit and okay, listen not to water. Scream, listen to water. But and be still. But it's got to come out. There's not just, oh, they're not there anymore. There's a lot of different. Listen, when people die, it's not just about them leaving. You see? It's about the things you didn't say the things you didn't do, the guilt, what you could have done. There's a whole gamut of things around you know what's it. That's interesting. I didn't feel any of that, but they all died at the same time. Wow. I was putting out a lot of fires. One died and it was a mm -hmm. shock. And then two months later, the other one got sick. And I'm in and out of the hospital constantly, yes. Yes. moving them out. Then the other yes. one gets sick and dies. It's like, you know, I'm talking four parents here between myself and my husband. And it was just fight or flight constantly. And I could, I could barely breathe. Yeah, that's a and real I, trauma point. It was, I'm telling you. And then when the last one finally yeah. went, I, I was in shock a little bit. Yeah. And I, um, I leaned in on my friends a lot. They were good uh, to me for the most part. But wow. I didn't know what to do because I never got time, honestly, to grieve any of them. And that was the problem, I think. They that were just the exact problem. never grieved them until finally I was able to sit with my thoughts. And I thought, oh, no. So I, I get it because I'm able to walk through it. Mm -hmm. But doing that hard work is where somebody like you comes in. You help people to do that work. And I try to do it as quickly as possible. See, that's so good. So I'm not, I'm a New Yorker, you, you know, you, and I tried oh, yeah. In, yeah, in all these years to make it very quick. Okay, that's so important because a lot of yes. people go to therapy and it's <laughs> never ending. Think of Woody Allen. The guy started at 12 and he's still going to therapy. I mean, I'm sure it's it a good thing for the man, but insane. come on. There's got to be a beginning, middle, and end. There has to be an end game to all Absolutely. this, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And people come to rehab and they say they've been to like 15. I hear I think that all the time. the record is 16. And I'm like, did anybody ever work with you on your own stuff like your self-esteem? And they, and they say no. They worked on the addiction, what happens to the chemistry of the body and all that. But they didn't really get down to it. And what I like to do is quickly get to what I call the soul wound, which is the deep core stuff that's happened young. That just repeats. And oh, repeats. I like this. Yes. Because you're in and you're out. I mean, it's in not really in and, and out therapy, it. but you well, know, keys. you get to what's going on keys. so that there's there's results. Okay, let's talk yeah. about millennials and their dating style, right? right? I mean, I actually have friends who are older and mm -hmm. they're doing online dating. And mm -hmm. actually, you told me that yes. you found, you met your husband yes. online dating, yes. which is great. Um, and they're out there, though, online dating, not having the kind of success that you are. And they're sending me the pictures at night going, can you believe this guy? And I'm thinking, oh, my God, get off. <laughs> and then I have a lot of friends who are younger, like 20s, early 30s, and they're doing the same thing, but it's more the swipe left and right kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, is it harder for younger people to find relationships now because it's so quick and it's mostly based on having well, sex? Well, there you go, Deborah. It has to do with your attitude, right? Like your perspective. Mm -hmm. Is it hard? If you think it's hard, if you think you're you know, you're never going to find anybody, you'll probably create that reality, you see? I mean, it's really good to start over again and have good belief systems about it, like work on yourself, become the best person that you can be, and be available to true love, right? Wherever it is at any age, right? And then you can be anywhere and meet the person, but you first have to get into you know, the manifestation, which is what I say is like, let's just say you have a list of what you want. Every woman has a list. I mean, every guy has a list, right? Mine would be kind. Right, okay. Really kind, compassionate, and likes to just listen. Great. So here would be the thing that I've realized from sitting with people year after year. Are you, did you become your list? Are you your list? Like, if you want respect, do you respect yourself? 
um, do you do? Are you as wonderful as the person you want to be with? You see? So you have to Oh, I would create... say yes, absolutely. Okay, but... great. <laughs> so when you manifest, you have to become it. It's kind of the secret of anything, like success. You have to act as if. You have to actually be the vibration of success. You can't walk in and say, listen, don't pay me, you know, what you were going to pay me. I'm not worth that much. You would never do that, right? So you always have to, like, hold the energy of that and hold the energy of uh, I'll be successful in love, you see? So for these millennials, there's so much going on. I mean, I would even say that a lot of these millennials are very spoiled. You know, they had a little easier than, than some of us. So they're used to, like, fast gain. And, hmm, you know, they have to go through a little grow up, too. So I like this one. Why rage is healthy in a relationship? Why? Because you get it all out? That's a fun one. Well, I'm just going to go home I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. and, and I just want to, it's just the truth about relationships. It's not the fairy tale, happily ever after. And that's the thing. Sure starts out that way, though, huh? Yeah, that's the beginning phase, which is the blindness phase, okay? The blindness, we, we, the we great all, sex, okay, all great. of it, right? It's okay, like, but oh eventually God. you got to go through the wake-up stage, which is it's not like that, right? Most people leave during that stage, all right? But if you can hang on and look at the reality of who you're really with and it doesn't have to be the fairy tale and get to the next stage you'll do healing and you'll grow together and then you'll get to the true love you see but you know again you can't be in the illusion of Cinderella you know the man's coming with the white horse you see relationships are, are you ready are absolute madness no is that true is it <laughs> and if you don't have the self-esteem you can absolutely go insane because that's the problem with women they don't have enough self-esteem so when a relationship goes bad they're done they're almost like you know on the pills just depressed and all this stuff and so but if you know that one of the stages is madness and, and it's part of it because you learn about each other it's not perfect we go through an alchemy in a relationship. We go through transformation. All relationships inspire us to grow. And when you know that, and you know that that's the way it goes, you'll expect it and you won't be freaked out when it happens. So that's why I go with the rage. A lot of women who I've worked with through the years are afraid to speak up. I'm not, but... Um, <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I'm not. Then, what you're, then you're healthy. Men, what do, because we're going to have to go in a few minutes. Men, what do they need to know about women? Or what, what can they do to just make it easier on a woman? Wow. I think men shut down. Men and I've seen this down. with all my friends. I mean, you know, that's their big beef. They just shut it down. Yes. And then she'll just keep going after him and after him. And they're like, oh, my God. So what are you doing if you're in that situation? What do you do? The guy shut down. You want to talk. How do you get out of that one? Well, you can't get a guy to learn by telling him to do it okay that's it's not gonna work you can't say do this because there are okay? different species there is a different way but <laughs> if a woman is a queen and loves herself and she know and the guy knows that if she, if he doesn't shape it up or step it up she's out of there she's out of there and that's how they'll go oh my god or you leave him you'll be like you know what I'm, I'm leaving you now they learn when you leave them that's when they listen Okay, so that's how it goes. So it, again, it all comes down to self-esteem in a woman too. If she's the queen and she demands that, he will be the king. And listen, all women inspire men to become a better person. It's the, it's the way of it. We know it. We it's do. happening in the world. It's just the way of it. And so a man who knows that is the one who can handle a strong woman and he'll be happier for it. We're going to have to end on that note, but for people who want to get in touch with you. Yes. AudreyHope.com and um, Ask Audrey Now on YouTube, Hope for Relationships, please. I documented it all on my YouTube because I just wanted to leave it and give it away. I You're really also did. working on a book as well. Yes, I'm correct? working on a book. Yes. And that should come out later on this yes. year. Yes, yes. All about step what you need to do to find true love and then the prayer to call it in. But my big takeaway from us today is, ladies, some self-esteem. Because exactly. if you project that and you have that, He's going to realize that, wait a minute, I can't mess with her here. That's right. Or I'm going to lose her. Absolutely. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for being here. And thanks so much for being here. And please look up Audrey. She's got a lot of great advice, great experience. She's really uh, been doing this for quite some time. Yes. And you're quite intuitive as yes. well. As well. We yes. didn't get into that, so maybe I'm going to have to have you back. Love it. Um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. And uh, we will see you next time on Deborah Cobalt Live. Bye-bye.